Uh, but before I listen to this podcast, um, especially with the movie section in our movie bracket, there will be spoilers about the movies. So um, if you don't didn't watch those movies, A, what are you doing with your life? B, why are you living under a rock? And C, Cameron, stop living on the couch and go watch those <laughs> movies. Um, but spoiler warning. So King Kong is in the mountains. He's in... Helena, Montana, mostly <laughs> mountainy, but I think it's probably the biggest city there. He's trying to gather food for his, for his family. Wait, is he a hundred you know, feet? Is he a hundred feet? He's a hundred feet. Okay, okay, okay. He's looking at rocks and he goes, "Rock, feed family." Picks up rock, goes back to his house. <laughs> As he's going back to his house, he sees this giant winged bird flying down. It's Godzilla, but this time because he had Red Bull, he's <laughs> flying down at him now, and he's like, "Yeah, yeah." <laughs> Godzilla goes. King Kong goes, huh, okay, throws Rocky Godzilla, we, hits him, he falls, he dies, God, we, King Kong wins. Can we please make this a skip? Please. Oh, fuck yeah. Please. From Mr. Broke Productions, in an association with Maximillionaire and Vice City Kingpin, present to you Life on Easy Mode. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. So anyway, as I was saying, we raid their headquarters, right, with knives, pitchforks, torch, and when we break into the building, we take all those weapons and we shove them right up the- Oh, hey guys, like, welcome back, how you doing? Didn't see you there. Welcome right. back- Wait, what? No, go ahead. I was gonna say, welcome back everyone to another episode of the Life on Easy Mode podcast. And ladies and gentlemen, we live in an oligarchy. There's no other way to say it. I the rich get Olive richer, Garden. and the poor get poor, and they go to Olive Garden. <laughs> Did you I heard <laughs> that, hear that voice crack? crack? Yeah. So before, I just woke up like 10 minutes so ago. So before we get started, at the end of this podcast, we are starting our movie brackets. Um, we have 32 movies. Um, we are, <clears throat> are going to be doing a few matchups. Um, today. Today. Um, we, um, at the end of it, um, at the end of this podcast, I took a few movies out and replaced them. So I think I said, like, um, we're going to do the Bourne trilogy. We took that out. I, t I replaced it with Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. And then um, we said one of the Lord of the Rings movies, and I just chose Fellowship of the Ring because that's, A, the shortest, and, B, it's the first one, so Nikki can just watch it and mm. doesn't have to watch any others. Everything else is pretty much the same. Um, so I would have loved to have done a 64 movie bracket with North, South, East, mm. and West, but I love, that these, but I love these guys too much to torture them. That yeah, that would have taken forever. But, um, too long. We're not nearly as much of, as movie people as he is. But so. um, I, I want to just, I just want to say something real quick before we start talking about these things. Every time I sleep over at Nikki's house, right, I have these weird ass dreams. And last night when you woke me up at 3:30 in the morning, I was like, did the exact same thing as last time. I wrote it down. So I'm this is just looking at your phone now, and I'm just noticing that he has like a whole paragraph. So 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 no. Dreams. So this is the one I had re like what was it like last week when um no it was it was New Year's I think. It was a week Wait. before. It was like two weeks ago. So. Okay. Yeah. So this is it. This is around 4 a.m. This is me. I, I woke up from it. I don't remember most of this stuff, but I woke up from it and I started typing it. So this is real. Starts off in a weird dystopian future where you have to unlock like a Lara Croft puzzle to survive. There's this big Grand Canyon thing that you have to jump over to reach the other side. Building falls. When there's this party where I meet girls and I have the tightest thong on I've ever had. <laughs> and, I got w and I got with one girl, but apparently she had high tech on her face that made it look like she's attractive. But really she was a catfish. Detroit become human. Kay scolded me. McGill's girlfriend. There's also these military guys where beforehand I needed to use their trucks or something and they had awards like trophies in them and I took them but then put it back. This is, I, this is like I said, right after I woke up. But then after the party, they broke into the apartment to try and find the rest. All happening while I was wearing a bra and a fucking string lace thong. So this is the dream that I had last night. 3.45 a.m. He jots down the time Now, too. in oh California, in the year tw 2022, and it says this because when I had the dream, it was like a movie. It said the year 2022. Was it was it above the Hollywood sign with no H? <laughs> so, no, no, it was like when you watch a movie, it says the year okay. the movie takes place. Yep. Me and Nikki are at a bar, and we see Madison Beer. I go over and talk to her. She calls me funny and cute, and she says she has a friend for Nikki. We all oh. go to an arcade after and have a good time. The friend that Madison has for Nikki comes out as a raccoon. <laughs> yes, a raccoon. <laughs> Wait, Nikki shoots it. <laughs> me, Wait, me, that sounds like something I would do. Me, if I got catfished so hard that there was a raccoon, I would probably shoot me it. Me and Madison cry, but then end up getting married because we are scared of what Nikki will do next. An earthquake happens and I wake up to find Nikki in bed next to me. And then I wake up for real after that. 
I, I shit you not, every time I sleep over here, I have the weirdest fucking dreams. I, I, okay, I don't know if, like, the outside noises surrounding you when you're asleep may affect your dreams, because sometimes... But it's funny, like, when Because, like, when you're asleep at, like, 2.30, 3.30 in the morning, I'm still up playing, like, Rocket League and shit, and I'm raging, and I'm but, yelling, and I'm screaming, I'm saying... Damn. My first my so first dream... maybe that My has first dream with was it. at 4 o'clock, and I remember you were talking, you were in the kitchen, and then last night... It was oh, you heard th- me there? Yeah, and I was at... Last night was 3.30, I heard you... I don't know if you were yelling, you were just just talking loudly. I was playing Rocket League. We were losing. This I was getting pretty mad. I was, then I was playing Arkham City, and I was trying to get the three Riddler trophies for a thing. And you know, I, I just I lost, so I I, I was kind of mad at that. But yeah. But this has three thirty three forty five a.m. So, so I, somewhere I, around there, I think. So anyways, yeah. those are my dreams. Hopefully, we'll have more soon because those are fucking hilarious. So like the new series now, Gion's dreams, and we just make skits out of them. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god! <laughs> I mean, some artists they use their dreams to make skits videos. So, you know, it has happened. So, um, So, Miguel, would you be so kind to introduce our viewers to what's going on regarding the stock market, Wall Street, I will be gladly to. So, a few days ago, um, the GameStop stock, like, exploded and people were making a lot of money from it. Mm -hmm. So, um, the reason why it exploded is something called short squeezing or, like, short squeeze. And you, you probably explain it better than I do. Uh, yeah. So I, I'll try to simplify it. You can probably elaborate or, or correct me if I'm wrong. But basically what happens, the simplest way I can explain it is that rich people bet on stocks going under. And so if they're right, they make money from it. Mm-hmm. If they're wrong, they have to pay more money or, or they lose money. So what happened with GameStop is that they bet on GameStop going down. But um, uh, redditors found out, and then they made the price go up, and it, it costed like billions of dollars for for the companies that do like this tactic in stocks. Right. So um, that's not exactly what happens. It's the simplest form of the way I can explain it. Right. So what did happen? Well, what happened? Well, what started to cause the GameStop stock to start rising was like a multitude of things. Like first, they made a brand deal with Microsoft for a few years. That kind of made the stock go up a little. One of the co-founders of Chewy.com, Ryan Cohan, he invested, uh, I believe, 9% share with GameStop. That made the stock go up. And then um, GameStop now apparently has this thing now where they have online purchases of shit. I don't know how long they've had that for. That's oh, been they've for, had, they've for a had while. It, they've had it ever since I would want to guess they have it. What's okay, well, what do you mean online purchases? Like, like buy stuff online. Like buy stuff yeah, online. And because, since, the, since because the of the pandemic and because not many people were going out, that helped them make their stock go up a little but even when the ps5 was being released the stock was too, that's the thing. stock wasn't even i mean for frick's sake i mean like we don't want to i don't want to get into it but like retailers when the ps5 was, was before the day it was released were idiots because well i mean no, they kind of do that to stop uh um bots i guess bots, okay. but like but like anyways like even so many people were on that site i would want to imagine like even then the st- this was in what september yes yeah. this was the, in september the, yep. the stock I don't even. I didn't even hear anything well, about the I, stocks I, rising. It like, wasn't like it was skyrocketing. Obviously, but like it started going more green. Than but red. why? But like, so it's going down because of that squeeze thing you were. Yeah. So, about? so yeah. obviously, those things can raise or lower stocks. But yeah. the main reason why it's it's priced uh, today, like four hundred, three hundred dollars, is, is because of the redditors. Yeah. So what happened was so, uh, uh, so for a short squeeze, first you have to talk about what a short selling is. So a short sell, let's say, so a short sell is when you. Um, borrow a mm-hmm. stock at a certain price. So let's say I borrow a stock that is worth twenty bucks, and I, mm-hmm. with the promise that eventually, after a certain amount of time, I'm going to give the stock back. I'm going to sell it back to them. So as soon as you buy or borrow that stock for let's say twenty bucks, you can then sell it to someone else for twenty bucks. Now in that situation, you want the stock to go down. Let's say mm-hmm. it goes down to five dollars. You sell, you buy that stock back again for five bucks and you have 15 bucks left over and then you sell the stock back to the person you borrowed it for for five dollars and then with that you made a 15 dollar profit mm-hmm. whereas if when you sell it to that other person and the stock goes up you you're to, forced to buy it back yeah. and you lose a profit and you mm-hmm. have to give it back to the so, person you borrowed it from so what happened with the short squeeze was basically these people who were short selling it um the stock because of you know the things i mentioned it started going up and then they were forced to buy those back and give it back to the people they borrowed. And with that, it caused like a domino effect for the stock with for the uh, stock to rise. And then more people who short sell oh, short sold it had to buy it back, and it was getting even higher and higher and higher. And so then that's what made the GameStop stock 
rise. Now, again, I'm no financial expert. You know, you shouldn't take any financial advice from us, but just that's basically our Not basic. That's basically our basic understanding of it, and that's our basic knowledge of it. That's probably the simplest way we could explain it. So it's very complicated. Like, short is it still high right now? Yes. Yes. Yeah, what so, is it at right now? I'll check. So basically, when when they're borrowing it, they're betting on it to go down, and that's that's why I was yes. trying to say simplest simplest um, terms. Mm -hmm. So right now it is at three hundred and twelve. So it's gone down a little, but it's still yeah, because it was it was, like it was at four hundred at one point. Yeah. So. And what was it? AMC was up AM, there too. AMC was the max. Uh, AMC hit was twenty dollars. Mm -hmm. um, I think that was also because recently um, they got. Wait. Oh, go ahead. Well, because AMC recently got bought. Well, like they were gonna go. Well, that has nothing to do with it. It well, has to do with the short squeeze. Yeah. Uh, Not, that, nothing. Like, nothing right now that the company's doing is the reason for their stock price right now. Oh, because yeah. I know it was going to go bankrupt. AMC, and then like someone bought, like saved them for like nine hundred and fifty million dollars. So I don't know if that, like, literally, like. That and then like a couple days later, the stock apparently went up. Well, so. no, the the reason is because of the shorts. Yeah, yeah, like with, right. with all these stock rises, that's the main reason. Mm -hmm. I mean, all this oh. stuff in the back was kind of like the stepping stones for mm -hmm. it, but short squeeze is kind of what did it. Which okay. I, which I'm low key kind of glad because I've had AMC stock for like a few months. So mm -hmm. I even even if it's like I bought it when it was like four dollars. Mm -hmm. So as long as it's above that, I've made money from it. I've made it. I bought a few shares and I've made it's it's kind of going up a little right now. It's at like mm -hmm. thirteen bucks. I it's, think it's the only stock that I have that's been like consistently like going up mm. for me at least mm. i just don't think any of us would have imagined gamestop like especially when gamestop in a few years is going to go out of business like right. like especially that big of it like I even mean, like if they had a jump i don't think none of us expected it to be that big that's why i don't think any one of us bought the stock right? it's the the point is not because it's going up the point is because pe redditors found out that rich people were yeah betting quote unquote betting on it right and then um they hyped hiked the price up so that Rich okay. people lose their money. Yeah. And now, so with this, you want to tell them what happened? With oh, regarding yeah. to whole so, so, how people can't become rich now? So Pussies. The day <laughs> that the price was supposed to go up because mad people were going to buy it, uh, all the st not all, but most of the stock apps um, blocked people from buying uh, GameStop stocks. Stonks. Jesus, that's a stonk. <laughs> AMC stonks. Um, the fact stonks. that it's some part of our vocabulary is <laughs> fine, bro. That's he, hilarious. He didn't even try to stop himself. He just floated with it. He goes, so AMC stonks. He said it with such confidence. It wasn't until after he was like, oh, wait a minute. They blocked people from buying um, GameStop stonks. Just no, it? just no, no, no matter what. Okay, okay, no matter what, just keep saying stonks. Okay, just, just okay. for the, just for the so, just for so the Robin Hood didn't allow people to buy GameStop uh, or AMC stocks, and um, they got not in trouble, but they're in like deep shit, and they're gonna be in trouble because um, mm -hmm. that's technically borderline illegal. Yes. And what also, what they also did is for some customers, Robin Hood sta uh, uh, started selling uh, GameStop stocks for them. At with, the lowest point. At the lowest point as well. So that's super illegal. That's actually illegal mm. because they're literally taking your money and they're making you lose money. Like one guy, the guy who originally posted on Twitter, he lost like thousands of dollars mm -hmm. because of that, because they sold it at its lowest point. That's literally illegal. They made that man lose his money. And be, No, and you, are you ready? Ready? The reason was because it was for his mm -hmm. own good. Yeah, that, that's what they what? all say. That's what they all say. And now a lot of brokerage firms that have done this, you know, blocking GameStop and AMC. Mm -hmm. But Robinhood is the one that's taken the most shit because they were the only ones that we know of that did that. And plus, they're the brokerage firm that always says, let mm -hmm. the people trade, free trade for all people. You know, mm -hmm. Robinhood compared to like brokerage firms like Fidelity is a lot more easier to use. It's a little simpler for someone who's starting to get invested in stocks. So like it paints itself as this uh, brokerage firm that's for everyone. That's for, you know, letting the average ordinary Joe make some money and know how investing works. But we know that's complete BS now because they're just protecting mm -hmm. the rich when they block GameStop, when they block AMC. And us average individuals, like the three of us who all have something to do with stocks, are pretty mm -hmm. damn pissed off. I am pissed off too because I could have made at least a little bit of money from that. Mm -hmm. The night before they blocked the stocks, I was like, okay, tomorrow I'm, I might make some money from this. And then not, and the open market uh, uh, comes in and it's like, oh no, you can't buy anymore. I'm like, what? It, it's stupid. Um, <coughs> It, illegal it's and it's illegal another thing not not to get political but um they are they are being um um what's the word examined uh, no investigated okay. Oh, okay um 
from one of the congresswomen that's in charge of one of those committees, AOC, which is also being um, backed by Republicans as well. Yeah, this is like it, the very one of mm -hmm. those very few times in history where you see both sides coming together and saying, "Okay, this is fucked. We need to fix this." So, so. that's definitely at, uh, um, that's definitely happening. What I what did piss me off though is that um, uh, Elizabeth Warren. I never liked her. She's trying to make it so that this never happens again and is on the side of the rich people. Really? Uh, yeah. What, what she said was that, um, there needs to be like laws, uh, like regulating what people can or can't do in the free market. That, that's what I think what she said, but I, I read the article. That's what it, I only read it once. So I don't, Yeah. but, um, so what do you think, you know, you know, you, like you said, they're being investigated. What do you think is going to come out of this? Um, nothing. You, know, you, you think it's kind of just be one of those things that they're, they're just they're get gonna, swept under the rug? They're billion. They're, they're big people with money. It's, it's the, the, They're going to be like, here, here's some money. Just forget this. Ever the happened. only thing I see like, happening is the class action lawsuit will probably, which will probably like go through and then we all get like a dollar 63 because it affected like millions of people. Right. So, but maybe, maybe they get punished or they get shut down. I don't, I don't see that happening. No, those, those, the Robin hood higher ups, you know, maybe not, not, not necessarily their employees, but I say more so the higher ups for mm -hmm. Robin hood specifically, they need to be charged mm -hmm. and jailed because especially it's one thing to block people from buying stocks because it, it would make them money. It's another thing to, to sell exactly yeah. to sell people's uh, stocks without their permission and saying it's for their own good. That's disgusting. That, that, that should be a felonious charge Illegal, right yeah. there. So is it felonious? Felonious, yeah. That's oh. it's a fancy word for felony. That's very fancy. <laughs> <laughs> felonious. Not as fancy as stonks. Mm, stonks. stonks. <laughs> I do hope deep down though that um those people who are filing a class action lawsuit do win against Robin Hood. I know Dave Portnoy is uh, mm -hmm. filing one. I think mm -hmm. he's kind of been like that. Mm -hmm. probably out of all the people, he's probably been the most outspoken person mm -hmm. regarding this whole stuff. Like he's made Twitter videos on it and and Instagram videos too, mm -hmm. like where he's like mad and shit and yeah. So if you're someone who invests in stocks, don't use Robinhood. Yeah, there are other brokerage firms. There's Fidelity, which is a little more complicated I'd, I'd, to use. But if you have someone who knows a lot about finances. They could definitely help you with that. There's TD. Um, what's it called? TD? Ameritrade. Ameritrade. But let me say something real quick. Yeah. Um, I just want to point out that Fidelity is the only uh, stock trading app that did not block GameStop or AMC. So I would really recommend them. Mm. Yeah. But um, every T, arguably the best stock trading app, TD Ameritrade did block them like a day before Robinhood. But mm. they they um. They're not as bad as Robinhood. Right. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's still kind of messed up that they did that. Yeah. But like compared to Robinhood, it's a lesser of the two evils, I guess mm -hmm. you could say. So don't, from now on, if you're thinking about using or, or trading in stocks, stay away from Robinhood. Stay away from Robinhood. I only have it right now just because just, I know you said like they only do it for 2020, but just so it's less complicated, I'm just going to hold on to it until after tax season, once I get all my taxes I mean, done. Because like, I still have to send a 1099 for 2020. Yeah. And then after that, I'm transferring everything over. To, mm. I'm gonna go to TD Armatrade. Armatrade. There's already, also others like Mural Edge. Apparently, you can trade stocks on Cash App as well, which uh, I didn't know about until recently. Wait, Cash App has one? Yeah, Cash App has stocks. They don't. I don't think they have every stock or something like that, but they do have. Does they, Venmo I think have they have, stocks I think they have too? Bigger ones. Yeah, they have so, a limited amount Ven, of stocks. Venmo has stocks too. Venmo doesn't. <laughs> no, but uh, oh, and uh, Acorns, the uh, yes, saving. Yes investment app yeah they Acorn have stocks does, as well yes. robin hood was one of the bigger ones yeah. i believe but like until recently of this it's it's i personally think the reason they did that was because their own like 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 ceos and like like um not ceos but like executive board like does like hedge funds and stuff like that and they mm -hmm. were trying, trying to save their own ass but yeah because yeah. it's funny because like they're billionaires they're afraid of losing money and they're mm -hmm. like oh you know we're billionaires we're gonna lose money dude what that's like that's like me. If I have a hundred dollars and I lose like five cents, oh no! Am I gonna oh. like cry and beat up the kid who took my five cents for it? Like, oh no! I'm a billionaire. I'm gonna lose mm. so many much money. Oh, I'm there, still a billionaire. As he's oh. crying in his yacht, <laughs> there, there was a billionaire that went on on TV, like news TV, and like oh, started Christ. crying. Not crying, but like he started like um, complaining. Yeah, complaining and saying it was an attack on the rich. Like, bitch, fuck you. Wait, like, wait, cry, wait, cry, cry more. Stark? Like, what? <laughs> like cry more dude who, who gives a shit dude like i'm i'm sorry it's like you know people have always said oh you know these rich people are saying you know if people want to make money why don't you just invest in stocks ordinary people okay let's do that the rich people wait no stop we didn't mean that <laughs> it's stupid it's why what i was just i just said like tony stark but like i'm thinking about like in the movie and like comic book stuff like bruce wayne tony stark billionaires 
I bet they wouldn't cry about this. I don't I mean, think they would care. Exa- exactly. So come on, people. Like, just no. Could you? Per- <laughs> come on. <laughs> Wait. Imagine if like Bruce Wayne, right? He finds out the, the ordinary people who were making money off Gotham stocks, City. He dresses up as Batman and beats the crap out of them. <laughs> Yo, Tony Stark just teams up with him. All right, boys. Yeah. Jarvis suit up. Oh he my just has the God. Avengers just like, all right, boys, we gotta just do something about this. Literally, uh, just um, just billionaires, just become a superhero. You don't have to worry about stocks. Just you know, just. Well, to be fair, Tony Stark didn't get his money from hedge funds. Yeah, exactly. Well, so. yeah. I will say there are a few billionaires who aren't bad. I know, like a lot of billionaires, they only care about their wealth. They really don't. I know do much. But like people like Elon Musk, he does. Oh yeah, a lot. I like uh, Elon. Polte. I'm gonna I'm gonna give a shout out to Polte. He'll ne- he'll never re- uh, like listen to this, but yeah, he like he, one day, one day, probably. One day. But um, we're dead. He 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 gives out money regularly. And yeah. He's not affected by this. Especially so. he's like uh, he's doing something recently. Like he's raising stuff. He's raising money. What does he give um, money to? Is it like? Uh, uh, well, he gives out money to people on Twitter who need it. So like. With, oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He. Yeah. Oh, he's one who works with Mr. Beast. Yeah. He, Beach, gives, right? yeah. he does giveaways with Mr. Beast. Okay. All yeah. right. Because I know there's a lot of billionaires. They like every week they put like a huge chunk of money mm-hmm. into a charities. Um, you know, maybe like you know, he usually gives out like a hundred, uh, not hundred thousand, a hundred dollars to like like random people on Twitter who actually need it and stuff like and that. And they just so. say, hey, can you give me a hundred? Yeah, sure. Here. Well, right, no, so, so guys, let's do that. Let's slide up in the DMs. Just be like, hey, listen, we're, we're, we're desperate. <laughs> yeah, literally. We need that money. Do you think Mr. Beast is a millionaire? Oh, a hundred percent. Hundred percent. Well, actually. Uh, I remember he talked about this on a podcast. He went. He said that he really doesn't spend a lot of money on himself. Like he's kind of well, a very all simple of his videos guy. He spends on other people. So Yo, he spends a lot of money. He on tips other houses, bro. Come on, literally. Bro. But like when it comes to spending himself, he doesn't have like the nice, the Ooh. newest car or like the most expensive clothes. He yeah, kind of just we we saves up him. whatever money he does have for himself. He kind of just puts. To the we side. literally saw him on New York City, like a re- like like a re- like a regular, regular person, regular, regular person, clothes, regular clothes. Clothes. Oh, yeah. Should we tell that? Yeah. Why not? Okay. So. This was back in 2018. We were in New York City. It was around Christmas time, but it was right before. Three days. Three days before Christmas, which in my opinion is the best time to go to New York City. Crowd is too. So it was around 5 o'clock. There was a show that was going to go on. It was like a light show. I don't think, though. It wasn't around 5 o'clock because I remember it was broad daylight. No, it was getting dark. No, no, no. It was like 4.30. It it was daylight, though. In December, though. So it was probably like 3 o'clock. 2, 3 o'clock. It was was midday. Okay, all right, whatever. So... You know, we're we're walking with the crowd, right? You know, with New York City, it's people on top of people. This was before COVID, of course. Oh, no, we were-, we're all going this way. We're all going one way. I'll, all of a sudden, as we're walking, I see these two, three giant ass dudes. Apparently, Mr. Beast is like six foot three. He's a tall ass dude. Yeah. We see them walking the opposite way. I look. I'm like, holy crap, that's Mr. Beast. And I go, I, and I, I, I go, Mr. Beast, Mr. Beast. And I go, he looks Nick, at me quickly, goes, hey. And, and then I, he keeps walking. And I go, Nick, what are you talking about? And he goes, look, it's Mr. Beast. I go, no, it's not. And Mr. Beast is still st- um, turned at us. And he, with his pedo stash, I'm sorry, but like he looked like he had <laughs> a pedo stash. Don't and roast he, my boy and then I go, like that. Oh my God, it's Mr. Beast. And then like, and then he goes, what do you mean? And I go, Miguel, look, it's Mr. Beast. And then we all like, fade. we all start freaking out. And as I'm getting taken, as we're getting taken away by the crowd, I'm going, Mr. Beast, Mr. Beast. I'm waving my hand in the air. And he just looked back at me. And I see like this, like, feeling of like guilt like he's like damn I feel bad for those guys because we're getting taken by the crowd I'm like wait Mr. Beast let me get well, a we picture were, no that, that wasn't a, it wasn't a big crowd I mean, no it was no, a, it was a big we crowd no, listen, with New I York le- City this crowd does not stop bro, moving well, if you I, stop I you get we pushed in, I as, soon as, as soon as I saw his face I fell down because I wanted to turn around we all and felt, well, we and all felt on laughing could not because we were getting pushed we were getting pushed I, we actually fell down too. well, well we all felt on laughing though too because yeah like but like still it was it was the coolest but it was like really messed up because I all I wanted was just a freaking picture. And this was like before Mr. Beast had like fifty million. He had like but maybe so he was eight pre- million at the time. He was still big. No, he was still big, but like still not big. nearly as big as he is yeah. now. Because back then, if you looked up his name on Google, there wasn't like an official Wikipedia profile. No, I bet like a was. lot of big people. No, mm-hmm. it wasn't until like maybe a year. He was, he was he was like one of those YouTubers that like like got like a few million views on on a few of his videos, but like wasn't like like. Like PewDiePie or like like um, KSI, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But now he is. He's yeah. bigger than like KSI and shit. Yeah. But yeah, that was just a cool story. But uh, well, the, the the only time I've ever met a celebrity. Well, I, I saw I saw. saw. That was we the biggest him. celebrity I ever we, saw. We, we basically bumped into yeah. him. Yeah, we're basically best friends with Mr. Beast. You know, we have a month speed dial. Hey, Jimmy, how um, you doing? <laughs> Jimmy Beast. <laughs> Jimmy Beast. <laughs> oh, so yeah. Anyways, um. Fuck the billionaires who are complaining about us making money. If you want to invest in stocks, don't use Robinhood. Use any, well, use any you other can, brokerage well, firms. I mean, unless they resolve it and... No. Then no. no. Nothing's going to happen. Gonna after, get after, under the rug. after that day, don't use Robinhood whatsoever. Don't use okay. Because we saw, like, if, if it was, like, one thing they kind of messed up for, it would be another thing. But this is monumental. Mm-hmm. They, like, the messed f- up badly. And they're getting sued. I think this is the second time now, like, majorly. The fact that they, like, sold a person's stock... That's uh, that alone, just like no, like that, okay. that, that just you cannot 
Mm -mm. The trust is no longer there. Yeah. You need to go somewhere else. And if you go before this happened, their ratings on like the app store was about a 4.9 out of five. And it was mostly five stars. If you go now, it's like on down and down and down right now. It's at 4.1 and there's a shitload of one on on Apple on app store. I I, I remember it on Google on Android. It it did go down to a one, but Google ended up deleting all those. um, Oh, I heard about that. I think the app store did some of that too, but it's just, if you go Mm -hmm. to the most recent uh, reviews, it's just all, I give it a one star. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Anything else about Robin Hood? Um, that's basically all we talked about. We well, talked about the short sales, short squeeze. The person is better than the app. Let me let, let me recommend. He's not wrong. Let me, <laughs> let, me let me recommend um a few apps if you do want to invest in stocks. I, if you have Bank of America, Merrill Edge, um, they're a little con- confusing. I I will admit that. But if you have a Bank of America, it's probably easy to transfer money in and out. Mm. Um, TD Ameritrade, Fidelity, definitely. Mm. I check out Fidelity, please. Out of all the uh, apps, that's probably the more confusing one mm-hmm. because I remember I tried getting that my, back when I first got involved in stocks, and I had no idea what I was doing. So oh. before, know what you're doing before you use Fidelity. Like mm-hmm. ask a friend or look it up something. So, so yeah, continue. and then I, I guess the last one recommend, I recommend is uh, if you just want to get in quick or, or like you don't really want to get complicated in Cash App, but they don't do like all the smaller stocks. They probably just have the big names. I'm not entirely too sure. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't do stocks. Like the most may probably mo- mainly the S&P 500, like the 500 yeah. biggest uh, stocks. So I, I recommend Stonks. those apps. Um, you could do some research and find out for yourself. Just stay away from Robinhood. Yes. Yeah. And again, this goes with just anyone else you watch on YouTube. Don't like look at us or any other people that you watch as financial advisors. Mm-hmm. We're just figuring this out just as much as you guys are. Mm-hmm. We don't know. We're not professionals. So uh, do your own research before investing in anything or doing anything with your money. You should always do that anyway. Mm-hmm. But uh, always do your research before you decide yes. what app is best for you or what you want to do with your money, whether if you want to invest in stocks or you don't. So. Yes. Okay, so moving away from that, um, I remember you said to me, Nikki, like, listen, if there's not much going on to talk about, don't let there be filler. If you have something to rant about, rant so, um, about it. So on Godzilla versus King Kong, who's going to win, that, really? <laughs> oh, I mean, okay, we can talk about that, sure. Uh, uh, Theodore. Theodore. <laughs> <laughs> who's getting the best head, Godzilla or Kong? <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, bro, All right, well, let's have a debate. Okay, okay, okay. So, I'm monkey. Sorry, I'm sorry. So, m- m- monkey. monkey? Okay, in the movie Skull Reptile. Island, he was 100 feet. And apparently, I looked this up. Apparently, he was an adolescent, and now this—that was in the '70s. Now it's you know Godzilla the King versus King Kong is in current times. So this is like 40 years after. So then he grows to enormous, 250 plus feet. Because I remember Godzilla in the first reboot mm. in 2014 was 350, and then in I didn't I didn't watch King of the Monsters because I heard that was bad. I just watched clips. But apparently, he was like rebirthed. Spoiler, and uh, he grew. So that that made sense. He Wait, Godzilla King of the Monsters. Godzilla King of the Monsters I, came out. Is that 2017. the new one that came out? 2017, yeah, I think. Yeah, or 2019. I, I don't remember. Oh yeah, I did see that one. That one um, was all right. It I was, mean, it's 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 just a, just a monster. It was dash. it was it, it wasn't as good as the 2014 yeah. one, but it was. Eh. I mean, the 2014 one wasn't great either. It was good. It was. Just, no, I, I thought that was a good. Movie. It, it was it was okay, but was anyways, good. he was he's like he's 393 feet exactly, and uh, now King Kong is the exact same height, 393 feet. Now, I I understand he's an adolescent. In, in its 1970s, he, he can grow an extra 50 feet, an extra 100 feet. You're 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 giving the man, the, the monkey, a fucking 290 feet, uh, no, 290 feet plus difference, so that he can go head to head. That is the only reason why they wanted to make the movie, be, mm. so that he can go head to head. And now apparently King Kong has a as you know Thor's hammer or Thor's axe, and now can blast freaking Godzilla's a blast uh, from fiery breath away like nothing mm. like like you know defensive defensive deflect it like like nothing ever happened yeah so i'm like i okay. could i could kind of see where they wanted to do that because they wanted to make it an even match they want they didn't want it to just be like oh godzilla's gonna win but i think hot take i think this would be pretty interesting if they kept godzilla to his original size like what was it like not 100 feet but what was the other one you said 250 feet he was 350 feet is is godzilla in 2014 i mean not godzilla king kong king kong King Kong is a hundred was a hundred and a hundred something 109 so i feel like if they kept him at that size versus godzilla at like his 390 size now granted i know there's a huge height like, difference but i think it'd be a little more interesting if like they he still put up a fight against godzilla like, like he crawls up on his back and just starts beating the crap out of like his eyeball or something no, give him like a hundred feet different but like in 1970s an adolescent okay but you're giving him 290 feet difference i don't care <laughs> like give him 50 100 like movie like I, I don't. I never watched the original black and white. I or whatever color it was. I mean, obviously back then Godzilla was only like 
a hundred feet or something like that. So yeah. it wasn't like God, King Kong was probably already that. It was back size, when a but, guy, some Japanese man, would just dress up in bro, a costume. And just walk those movies like this. in the '80s and '90s are so freaking hilarious because it's just, like, especially when the English dub. Like, whenever you want to watch a movie, like when we watch Parasite, we're not gonna watch the English dub. We're gonna watch the Korean. Oh, oh you yeah, know, I, I, I English prefer that because when yeah. you when you see the English people, like it doesn't match the like when they're when I, they're I screaming. Hate that. No, but when they're screaming and they're like, "Oh no, get out!" Like it doesn't like get like, the same sense. Like you want to. It's have almost like they purposely like choose bad voice actors yes. for the English version. Honestly, like okay, so like they don't even sound the same. Like you could like I bet like if they had like a darker like Asian in, in like the Japanese, but they had like the whitest person with the squeakiest voice, like squeakier than mine. It just would not like make it sense. It just doesn't make sense. It m- makes sense, but. I never saw the original, so I don't know. Um, I, maybe there's comic lore about King Kong. I, I, I don't. I've only know. seen the one King Kong movie, um, where he's like on the Empire State Building. Which, well, that's, that's, that's like, the original, the original, one, and uh, that's with, with it was a black and white. Jack, Jack, uh, I Jack don't black. remember. I saw Jack it when Black, I was like, 2005. It's like no. a three-hour freaking movie. I don't remember. I, that's the only one I remember. Well, but. well that's like the most iconic like scene yeah. for Godzilla. So. I, I saw it when I was like seven or six. Mm. So I, don't I, I did see the, the 2005 one. Yeah. I thought that was a pretty, that was good, pretty movie. good It was pretty good. It was just three hours, and I'm like, but yeah, like, it, was it, was still, it was still pretty good. But I, uh, Godzilla's going to, like, he, in the movie Monsters, the King of the Monsters, he beat King Ghidorah, which is apparently obviously the the king of all monsters, and but it, an ape, like, Come on! If if the if he if King Kong wins because in the trailer I love it and it's not going to be true. It says one, like scene will scene fall. And I go no no one no yes. one's going to fall. Both that's what no, this is what's going to happen. A hundred dollars. They're both going to team up because then the bigger monster is going to come down and they're going to have to team up. That's what I'm thinking. Maybe, that's and then exactly they're gonna be what like, is going to happen. They're going to be like, oh, we didn't lie. One will fall. The one monster fell. They no, stayed you, alive. You know what's going to happen? Like, King Kong's going no, to be like, Martha. God's going to be like, why did you say that name? Or... Hey, I was going to make that comparison. <laughs> why did you say that name? <laughs> so... Okay, maybe so when they say one will fall, that that, that doesn't necessarily it doesn't have to mean that one will die. Maybe one will fall, and that's supposed to be like a an amp up for a sequel. Do you think they're gonna make like a second movie for this? Um, I mean, it's it's gonna make money. No matter. They're probably gonna milk it. Probably. I mean, it's gonna the the sequel made money. It's God Godzilla fans are gonna want to go see it because it's Godzilla versus King Kong. Mm -hmm. So that's gonna make a few hundred million. I mean, I want to guess the budget the the box office. I mean. The budget is gonna be is like one fifty two hundred million easily, so um, they're probably gonna break like well no see here's the thing though because now I'm thinking about it it's not gonna be it's during COVID it's gonna be released in March on HBO Max and um, theaters but obviously that's only that's two months away so maybe obviously COVID's not gonna go away in two months it might you know because of the vaccine it might lift up like the t- like one percent and people might go see it in theaters but. I don't know how box office is going to work. So if it even manages, they make make a sequel. But I'll only see it if people say the fights are good. Because I, I, honest to God, I know the plot is not going to be entertaining whatsoever. No. But $100, they're both going to team up because freaking... No, Mecha Godzilla is apparently in it too. So that's why people are going to team up in it. Because in, in this very like split-second scenes, people can see a metal like Godzilla head, like a split second. And then like in another shot of the trailer... There was like a computer where it showed like I guess the feet of God, of Mega Godzilla and it was like downloading 100 percent or something like that. So mm. that I would not be surprised if they had to send a Mega Godzilla at the end of the movie, and King Kong and Godzilla are like, all right, let's bust this dude up. <laughs> so that's exactly. I just explained to the plot of the movie it hasn't even come out yet, so you don't even need to go see it. Literally, well, yeah, unless you have yeah. HBO Max, you are more than welcome to see it, like me. I, but, probably, um, I probably won't watch it. I'm, it's a free maybe. movie. You might as well. Right. I mean, like if it goes, eh, I don't know if I'll watch it. Maybe I, not. I'll I'll watch it. And if it's enter, if I if I jig, jiggle, if I if I chuckle, if I jiggle. Why did I say jiggle? I don't know. Not, you, you don't have any fat to jiggle with. Uh, yeah. yeah. <sighs> but so. um, if I chuckle a bit and I go, <laughs> that was cool. I'll let you know. Okay. And give me your rating, Mr. Movie Man. It's already give me like a 50, 60. It's, it's gonna be okay. <laughs> Damn. It's gonna be okay. I I ex- literally explained the plot to you. Like that's exactly. That that's that's definitely that's what's not gonna happen. What's gonna happen? I prove me wrong, Warner Bros. Please prove me wrong. Like they're not please. gonna. They're not. They're not going. He's probably gonna be right. Oh God, God! This is why Hollywood needs me. Like, come on! Oh, I could have come up with a better. This is why Hollywood needs me. I could have come up with a better plot than that. Like, Nikki, let's think of a plot. All right, ready? Okay. Okay. 
think. Oh, you the, want me to start? Yeah. Okay. So the city takes place not in your typical city like New York, Boston, Tokyo. No, this takes place in, in Chicago. Nashville, Tennessee. Oh, Nashville, Nashville, Nashville Tennessee, okay, in okay. the middle of land where there's no ocean that any creature okay. can no. come out of. How about Montana? Okay. Okay. In the mountains. Okay. Yeah, King Kong is on a vacation. And mm. he is being feathered. He's being fanned by these beautiful the, uh, females. Nikki, uh, Hollywood deserves Nikki more than it deserves you right <laughs> now. <laughs> no, he's in the mountains, right? You know, he's looking for food for the his The mountains family. in Tennessee. He said Montana. Montana. We're going to Montana oh, now. Oh, now we're in... We're jumping oh. to Montana, right? So King Kong is in the mountains. He's in... Helena, Montana, mostly <laughs> mountainy, but I think that's probably the biggest city there. He's trying to gather food for his, for his family. Wait, is he hundred you know, feet? Is he hundred feet? He's hundred feet. Okay, okay, okay. He's looking at rocks, and he goes, "Rock, feed family." Picks up rock, goes back to his house. As he's going back to his house, he sees this giant winged bird flying down. It's Godzilla, but this time because he had Red Bull, he's flying down at him now, and he's like, "Yeah, yeah." <laughs> Godzilla goes. King Kong goes, huh, okay, throws Rocky Godzilla, we, hits him, he falls, he dies, God, we, King Kong wins. Can we please make this a skip? Please. Oh, fuck yeah. Please. Please. I want to be Godzilla. Okay, that's fine. Just throw a rock at okay. me. <laughs> Just let me fall. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. okay. I mean, I was trying to go on the more, uh, like, I thought we were going to go on the serious route, but then we oh. took a turn. And I was like, oh, okay, we're going to Well, I mean, realistically, when do we ever take ourselves seriously? Never, so, never. Come on. <laughs> okay. Now, when I originally said about the rant thing, that was not what I wanted to talk about. I wanted oh. to talk about something else. Oh, okay. Rant so. Thing. Like you said to me last week, you said, Nick, if you have something to rant about, rant about it. Yes, well, rant. I do. I have a problem with the Catch a Predator star, Chris Hansen. My boy, Chris Hansen. Your boy, Chris Hansen. <laughs> Not anymore. This is Not anymore. NBC. We made, a, we made a video on him last year because yes. he was becoming in the news again because he was going after, YouTube, going after the YouTuber Onision. And I just wanted to make a video about him. Yeah. And so uh, I hate to tell you this to you, but if any of you who watch this like Chris Hansen, I'm here to tell you that he's scum. Well, so I, I, I hate... The videos are pretty funny, like the like the twenty minute length episodes that are on YouTube, like from Dayline Embassy, that like no, yeah, the early two thousand. It is pretty funny because the dudes that are forty years old that bring in pizza and like, oh, I didn't know she was fourteen. I'm sorry, is the best no, no, thing to is, watch. I'm not denying that. I I oh will say God. the Catch a Predator had his best moments, oh but I'm God, just saying Chris great. Hansen himself yeah. is a piece of crap. So what happened is, so he says back in early 2020 he's going to go after the youtuber onision because at this time onision was accused of some pretty messed up things like uh mistreating his children um stuff to do with like his ex shiloh things like that i won't get too much into it so basically you know chris hansen says i'm going to go after onision basically to make a long story short nothing really ever came of it he kind of just would always make these live streams he kind of would wouldn't get anywhere and then people stopped taking him seriously that's kind of like the basis of it there's a lot more complicated details to that mm -hmm. and so <laughs> Now, with this, Chris Hansen obviously had gotten sources from people online regarding Onision to see if he can get dirt on him, to see if he can make some kind of investigation to take care of Onision. One of those people, this user, who, again, do not, I'm not going to say his name, I'm not going to include his name in this podcast, but anyone who knows this whole situation knows what I'm talking about. Um, this user, it was found that he had worked with Onision because he leaked a few screenshots when he was talking... Not Onision, Chris Hansen, excuse me. He leaked a few screenshots when he was talking to Chris Hansen because he showed screenshots of Google Voice Call. And the way Google Calls work is whatever the number is of the person you're calling comes up in the browser web link. Mm -hmm. And so in these screenshots, he blurred out the number in all of them except for one. And the number, the full number was exposed. And a YouTuber by the name of John Swan, when he was doing research on Chris Hansen and on this individual, he confirmed to multiple people that that number was Chris Hansen's. There were a few other ways that he confirmed that this was Chris Hansen, but that was like the big one because it confirmed that it was Chris Hansen. And then uh, he uh, another uh, screenshot was exposed, and it showed um, Chris Hansen's like uh, messages and text messages. It showed that he talked and texted this user more than he did his own son. Bruh. So, okay, so now you're probably asking, okay, so what's so bad about this individual? Well, throughout this whole... Chris Hansen phenomenon. There were YouTubers who had made videos on him, but the main person who probably had the biggest videos made on Chris Hansen was a YouTuber named John Swan. He's a part of the commentary community, along with another individual like Nicholas Diorio. Both these guys I watched, they made Chris Hansen videos. You should check them out. They make really good content. So John Swan had made multiple videos regarding Chris Hansen. And the first ones were like regarding how he was a con man, how he like lost money, how he, you know, he was getting sued, how he was like, you know, losing money and all the stuff he did for fraud. And so at one point, this user said that he's going to go after John Swan now. And basically, this user, who was already known for this, doxed 
John Swan. He docks Ooh. his family. He docks his little sister. Jesus. And all this information now was exposed all over the internet. So, and now, ready? <laughs> so, now this was brought to Chris Hansen's attention. And Chris Hansen, when he was brought with this information on a live stream, he says, let me be clear. I do not condone doxing of any sorts because I myself have been a victim of doxing. But because I don't know this anonymous person, because I don't know this person personally, I can't say and I have no control over what they do. So you mean to tell me that when you work with someone, whether if it's via business or via investigation, whatever, if you don't know them personally, but you find out they do something really messed up, that, oh, uh, that's none of my business. Are you kidding me? It's one thing if they've done stuff in the past, like shady stuff in the past, that should already make you not trust them. But if they're currently doxing people, ruining people's lives, and you're still working with them, dude, I'm sorry, you're a straight up moron, and you're just making yourself look bad. And it's true, Chris Hansen, he's a piece of crap because there's no way that he doesn't know what this anonymous individual is doing, but he's still continuing to work with him. And, and we know this because he publicly follows this account on Twitter. He publicly tweets with this person mm -hmm. he likes his tweets and they work together and this guy will feed him information about anyone who's criticizing chris hansen or anytime there's like shade or messed up stuff about onision now granted i don't like onision either i think he's a piece of crap as well but the fact that chris hansen was doing all this with this person who is known for doxing is scum and it just puts a really bad light on chris hansen and the fact that he won't even disavow or not work with this person anymore, even though it was confirmed that this man knows what this person is doing, it just makes Chris Hansen look like scum, and in my opinion, he is scum. So the Catch a Predator um, star is not who you think he is. Literally, he's only using YouTube as a stepping stone to get back on the main television because he's not on main television anymore. You know, yeah. they, they don't make new to Catch a Predator videos. He wants to make them money. And that's really all he cares for. He wants to make the money. He's using the victims, victims regarding the whole Onision situation because it was also a documentary that was made about Onision, and they put it on Discovery Plus, and Chris Hansen's in it, and literally they said, oh, we're not going to use the victims, we're not going to use the victim stories, uh, we're not going to put it on in the documentary because they wished for that not to be shared, and they put it on the documentary anyways. Basically just completely not listening to anything the victims of Onision had to say, and Chris Hansen was a part of that. So, Chris Hansen is a very sketchy dude. What do you guys think about him? Well, I used to like him, you know, he was kind of funny, you mm -hmm. know, especially with the videos, but, um, I mean, could have been worse. It could have been ironic that he got caught, you know, meddling with some 14 year olds. It could have been worse. Who, like oh, well, no, 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 Chris Hansen, Chris Hansen. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, no, yeah, obviously it could be worse. That's but, like the worst I mean, thing even happen, still, but... like, this is kind of scummy. Um, it is. This scummy. is, this is probably the scummiest way to get, to get your name back. I mean, he didn't really, I mean, I'm not saying that he lost his name, but to, put his name back out there it's probably one of the more scummier ways to do it like there have probably Definitely. been other easier ways maybe but i think because it, especially with his like tax thing or something like that yeah, tax not fraud. a lot of people wanted him back so this is probably like eh, shit well do i gotta do this literally or? because he wanted to make his reputation yeah. more, on a more positive light again to say oh look at chris hansen stop the predator youtuber onision we can get him back on public television you know this man wants to do good but he did it and he was trying to do that in such scummy ways by working with people mm -hmm. who dox individuals so again if you want to check out the youtuber named john swan or Nicholas Diorio, give them support. They made really good videos regarding Chris Hansen. Yes, yes. Definitely check them out. Yes, yes. And uh, glad John Swan is safe, by the way. So, And that's why I'm not going to put the person, the individual's name in this yes, podcast, because in case he sees this, God forbid, I don't feel like getting doxxed. Yeah, I never knew who Chris Hansen was until we made that video. I, love you, it. You, yeah, yeah, I, you, I, I need to show you one of the videos. You've never oh. seen the I'm Chris Hansen, please have a seat before that? Oh, mm -hmm. I have to Damn. show him one of the videos. All right, uh, definitely show all right. him. Oh, the Super Bowl. You guys well, that's, know well, more that's, about. well, that's well, that's next week. Do you want to? I mean, do well, you yeah. Say by the time this comes out, Tuesday or Wednesday, this, it'll be right before. Do the you want to do predictions? Yeah. So Bucks. You think the Bucks? Yes. I, I hope, hope the Bucks. Bucks. Yes. Me too. I want the Brady. Oh, I, I thought hope. you want the Chiefs to win, so you can say this is a no, Chiefs. Yeah. No, yeah. I'm from Florida. I'll vote for oh Tampa. Oh my God, that's, that's literally the only reason Good. why. But so right now, the Super Bowl is going to be the Tampa Bay Buccaneers with the Kansas City Chiefs, and the main quarterbacks for them are you have Tom Brady for the Buccaneers and Patrick Mahomes for the Chiefs. This is the second year in a row now that the Chiefs have gone to the Super Bowl. Yes, yes. And both of these teams are very offensive teams. 
meaning they have a lot of weapons. Tom Brady, he has Mike Evans, he's got Godwin, he's got Gronk, he's got, a Glock. He's got Fournette, he's got <laughs> Jim, he's got a Glock. I mean, because you go, they have a lot of weapons. Rob, well, that's like the term that they Rob use. Rob Glockowski. Rob Glockowski. You know what Mahomes has? He has the entire city of Kansas. Like, Literally, that's all he has. He has Andy Reid, the big, big back man, give me Super Bowl so I can go to White House. He has the House. townsfolk. <laughs> he has a capital raid. Uh, <laughs> he, has the, he has the name Chief in his name. Listen, he's got, he's got it. Literally. he's the He has the... Uh, QAnon shaman, <laughs> <laughs> and with the Chiefs, they have, of course, they have Patrick Mahomes, they have Kelsey, they have Hill, they have all these weapons. So it's going to be a very offensive yes. Super Bowl. But I think, in my opinion, I, th- I think this is going to be one of those things where experience comes over uh, youth. I think Tom Brady is going to win. I think the mm-hmm. Buccaneers are going to win because they have proven so many people wrong this year. When Tom Brady originally, at the beginning of 2020, Said he was coming out of New England, and then they found out he was going to the Bucks. Everyone's like, "Oh, Bucks will probably go nine and seven at most. They're not going to do that good." Well, you were kind of close. They went eleven and five, but they kicked ass in the playoffs because Tom Brady is a playoff quarterback. And look at them now; they're in the Super Bowl, facing again. He, this man, again, this man. That's so funny. Twenty-one they're like, years. They're like, Twenty-one oh, years. Tom Brady's the... out of the Patriots. Now Jesus. we finally don't have to worry about him in the Super Bowl. Tom Brady, nah, Jesus, Chief. Jesus. <laughs> they, they have to worry about another team. Now we have to worry about another team, bro. Bro, you think leave, me leaving the Patriots did anything? Nah, son. This is my field. Nah, <laughs> you know, this I, is my game. I saw this stat where it's like. Tom Brady is more likely to go to the Super Bowl than it is for Steph Curry to make a three. <laughs> Are you see- well, he's yeah. gone to the Super Bowl 10 times in mm-hmm. his career. 21 it- years. Okay, I don't know how true that is because Steph... It is true. It, I would no. I, yeah, Steph Curry I, makes I, a lot of threes. Yeah, but I, I feel it, like that's true. Because uh, st- statistically, Brady has been to the Super Bowl like more times in his career than like Steph has made or missed threes. Oh, missed threes. Like, like, like... Oh, it's hard to explain, but it, it is true. Okay. Like, like the probability of Tom Brady going to the Super Bowl is higher than Steph Curry making a three. Mm. I, mean, I saw something so show. funny. He said, if I can't win the AFC championship, I'll just go to the NFC championship <laughs> because a bunch of the NFC Patriots, AFC. Oh, my goodness. So, um, I think the final score, it's going to be in the 30s. I say... Oh, I know mine ooh, already. I'm going to say, you say 35 yours. to... No, 37 to 35 bucks. It's going to be a close game, hands down. This is probably going to be a very massive Super Bowl. So, 31 27. I'm going to say 32 27. 32, it's going to be a very close game. What? And I and I say there's going to be a lot of field goals that are going to be in play. I feel like there will be touchdowns, but I feel like field goals will be the main point no. of I I I, I well, think listen, so. with Patrick Mahomes who's always making those long shots, end zone touchdowns, it's going to be a touchdown. I know nothing 31, about 20, football. 31, so. 27. And with Tom Brady, you know, once he started gaining momentum and he started having a chemistry with these people on the box, he made some pretty good passes with Ed mm-hmm. Evans, Godwin. Um, what's what, what's the didn't, other tight end? Not Gronkowski. Last Super Bowl with the Chiefs, it, that was a lower score, right? Well, it was with the San Francisco 49ers. What and was it, though? It was, I it was a lower score. And I feel like it wasn't a lot of touchdowns. It was more Lee field goals. Because the uh, 49ers were more of a defensive team yeah. last year. They didn't even make the playoffs this year. I don't even know how the hell they made it. Like it was, uh, they were on, like, cocaine last year. Oh, yeah, know. it was 31-20, so it wasn't as big. I'm, oh, okay. I thought, a, I thought, as much I felt, of a score. Oh, it was the Patriots the year before that was really low. That I was oh, that was with the them. Rams. That was mm-hmm. mainly just field goals. Yeah, that one wasn't as exciting. That's why I say field. Well, I mean, obviously it's a different team, but like I feel like I feel like what they're going to do is, especially with the the Tampa, this is just me. Now, I'm not as big into football as he is, but as a... No, I'm not a coach. Did never sign me up as a coach, but I will want, as with Brady and Gronk on my team... I would want to look at what the Patriots have done in the past Super Bowls and see how they coordinated those two. That's how I would see it. I would see how Brady and Gronk played in other Super Bowls as a mm-hmm. coach, and I'd be like, okay, let's try to match that. Uh, that's what I would do. Oh, yeah, they're probably going to realize that. So they're pro- Brady and Gronk are probably going to do something different because just, in the past just, when they just were— Just watch Brady and Gronk are to be doing a lot of throws together, like a lot of— No. Well, I, I feel well, like it. As of lately, like on the Bucks, Gronk hasn't been thrown too much. He's kind of just been more on the line kind of blocking. Mm-hmm. But the few times that Brady had thrown to Gronk, it were pretty That's big why plays. I, because with Gronk, even though he's not the biggest, biggest dude— he's I still, still don't he, want to get run over by no, him. No, he's like <laughs> six foot six. I mean, he's not the widest. He's not the strongest. But like, when, it takes like three people to <laughs> take know, him down. He goes, he's only six foot six you know i mean okay in basketball that's not that tall but in football that's pretty damn tall i'm just hello <laughs> i'm looking hello you are hello hello miguel 
Wow. <laughs> well, you, you had to break your neck just to look up at him. <laughs> Straight well, up. But I'm saying, like, when Brady throws to Gronk, it takes, like, three dudes to take down Gronk. And it's, it's quite impressive. I still think quite that they're, they're going to they're gonna try to match um, what, I mean, obviously, it was years ago. Like, it's different. But I would think, what kind of passes were they done? Let's see if we can try to formate that. Let's try, see if we can try to replicate that. Not all of them, but, like, mm. maybe some of them. That's what I would do. Never sign me up as a coach. I'd be a terrible one. I'd, I would lose the first few games. Um, <laughs> like Hugh Jackson for the okay, Browns. Okay, okay, go there, go there. Sir, we're on the outside of the field. I know, just do it. All right, throw it to his. All right, um, Sir, uh, have him throw it to him. Okay, Sir, form there, defense. form there, form there. Sir, why are we in the formation of a penis? Just do it. Just <laughs> trust me. <laughs> uh, but that's See, my prediction. That's good. That's a good prediction. I hope the... Bucks win because yeah. I want. I'll, I'll, I, mean, I, I think if Brady wins the Super Bowl, I know he wants to play a few more years. I think he should retire. Just my personal opinion. Ended on a Super Bowl with a different team, because Patrick Mahomes is. You know, it's pretty obvious he try. He's trying to chase Brady's legacy, and I think I out of any he'll, QB he'll right now, it. he's definitely going to be the one that gets the closest to it. You know, if he doesn't get to it, because Mahomes is a pretty damn good oh, QB. He's very good. But if Brady wins the Super Bowl, especially against Patrick Mahomes, Patrick Mahomes is going to need to do a lot. To beat Brady, he's gonna need a to start. Be, to beat to beat Brady's legacy. He's gonna have to uh, <clears throat> uh, break up with his wife and d- date supermodels. Like this is the only way he needs to. Exactly. I mean, Who I makes mean, more than I him? Mean, I mean, if if, him. <laughs> if, if, Chiefs, if the Chiefs win, I will not be mad. I promise you that. I will be more rooting no. for the Bucks. But if the Chiefs win, I will not be mad. I wouldn't be mad. Oh, I wouldn't be I, mad either. I would say, you know, listen, Patrick Mahomes, he's a good kid. I'm still gonna, very, I'm still gonna say this is it, Chiefs. This is <laughs> so it's a win-win win for you. Yeah, it's a win-win <laughs> for me. Uh, so that's our predictions. Um, but uh, ye. Shall we move on to the movie bracket? Yes. I think we should let's move on. Let's All right, let, let's All do right, this. All right, boys. Time. The movie, the Life on Easy Mode 2021 movie bracket list. Insert sound. So, I actually, you saw the um the bracket. I kind of switched up the um the placements a little bit. I randomized that one more time just so that it's easier for us because we still you guys still need to see more movies. I thought, I thought the, the I thought the brackets were fine. I saw a few good. Well, well no, they, they're still they're still very good ones. It's just that some of them were like mm, they they need to see that one. And, uh, okay, like, okay, fair enough. So, thirty two movies. I would have loved to do six to four, but I love the guys, not, and I'm not going to torture them. No, I'm not going to torture them. Just so <laughs> here are the I pressed randomized C's. So these are all randomized. I was originally going to do based on Rotten Tomatoes score, but we were going to do that. So this is randomized. Mm-hmm. So we have um, we have sixteen matches, each obviously with two movies. Just we'll probably only get to two or three, and we'll we'll okay. each bra- each matchup. We'll talk about one movie each. What's just go good? through the ones we're going to go to through today. No, well, I'll I'll do the ones that what which ones are. The, you know the the fucking matchups, and then we're gonna you know do okay. like two. So I think the first one we'll do. But um, Joker versus Spaceballs. That's easy. Joker. That's you should have kept the other bracket. No, it gets worse. Goodwill Hunting versus Get Out. Interstellar versus Fellowship of the Ring. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood versus 1917. Parasite versus Whiplash. Ferris Bueller versus The Dark Knight. Saving Private Ryan versus Anchorman. Matrix versus Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, Knives Out versus Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, Inception versus Logan, The Lego Batman Movie versus Endgame, Spider Verse versus Pulp Fiction, Ex Machina versus The Prestige, <coughs> Schindler's List versus Empire Strikes Back, The Lego Movie versus Baby Driver, and The Shawshank Redemption versus Thor Ragnarok. I made it a little bit tougher. That's why I didn't no, want it to be. I like, like the first bracket because a lot you, more. it was gonna be easy. I, I like to make it a little. I'm tough. sorry. The End Game versus Lego Batman. That is so <laughs> funny. All right, who would win? This giant monumental universe where like I'm the most powerful man in the universe kills people or co- a, a couple toy boys. So I think we're gonna do Joker versus Spaceballs. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll do Ferris Bueller versus The Dark Knight, and if we have time, we'll do the Lego Batman movie versus End Game. So okay. what we're gonna do is if you. Already know your answer. Don't even say. It. If you don't know, don't don't what's, say anything. What's the first one we're going over? Joker versus Spaceball. So we're gonna talk about it. I think we all know what's gonna obviously win, but we'll talk about both movies. What we like. Don't 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 like all oh, this. This is shit. This is shit. Obviously, if we if we need to nitpick, go ahead. But just talk about what we like. So. Okay. So I think when it comes, uh, oh, we, you, shall we start? Yeah. Okay. So go. I think when it comes to Joker versus Spaceballs, these are two completely also, different also, genres. Also, 
w- don't when you talk about the movie, don't don't say and I choose this. We'll no, all, no, no, no. We'll all go yeah, yeah. through and then we'll all. Yeah. I kind of said I don't know if you heard me. I kind of said a minute ago which one I prefer over these two. <laughs> so if you did ignore that, so now when it comes to Joker versus Spaceballs, these are two completely different genres. So Very. when it comes to something like this, you have to take into consideration which one you enjoy more overall. Mm-hmm. Whereas Spaceballs is a comedy. Very good one, might I add. Whereas Joker is a thriller. A very good one, might I add. <laughs> borderline horror movie because that shit gets pretty freaky at times. Yeah. Oh, God. So it just boils down to now what we enjoy overall more between the two. Yeah. So, I mean, Joker, like, Joaquin Phoenix is great. Spaceballs, the acting is okay. I mean, it's, it's not... It was intentionally supposed it, to be, like, it, okay. It, it was intentionally supposed the to be The jokes bad. in there, I think... I don't <laughs> think I've quoted a comedy so much. Obviously, I think, honestly, in my personal opinion... I think there are better comedies out there, but I think this one is just because the quotes, like, you idiots, you captured their stunt doubles. I think, didn't you say, that out of all the comedy movies, that's one of the most quoted? Quotable, uh, I quotable? can think of. I think like, that and, like, National like, Lampoon's like, Christmas like, Vacation. Wait, wait, like, hold on, hold on. Is what? Ace Ventura in there? No, we, we switched that out for Spaceballs. Yeah, but don't you remember that? We oh, did I don't that. remember that. Yeah. Yeah. So, Damn. no, like, like, you idiots. What, what is this? We are watching now, sir. Now? Yes, sir. Now. <laughs> and then, when will then be now? Soon, sir. How soon? soon? Now. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's stuff like that. It makes it a great movie. Like, Whereas... At the beginning of the movie, he goes, all right, sir, his sir, his name is Major Asshole, sir. How many assholes are, am I surrounded by? Sir! I'm surrounded by, by assholes. assholes. <laughs> See, it's stuff like that. That's the most quotable comedy. Oh, my God. And Whereas Joker is like, has the most like iconic scenes. Like, you get what you fucking deserve. Um, I, think my li- I used to think my life is a tragedy. Now my life is a comedy. Those are quotes mm-hmm. as well. But the scenes go really well the with The stair it. scene. The stair mm-hmm. scene, of course. Like, you know, Gary Glitter's rock and roll part two. Now, mm-hmm. you can, now, when I rewatched it for the second time about a year ago with my dad, this was the f- second time. And people were like, uh, watching it the second time, it's and I go, okay, I'll go into it and see how it is. Watching it a second time, I still liked it. I I originally rated it like a 90 out of 100. I brought it down to about like an 82, 83. Really? It's only because a lot of people, it's basically a mixture of Taxi Driver and, no, it is like Taxi Driver, it's very like it, like but Taxi it's Driver. basically a Joker DLC skin. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess you could say that because he doesn't really become now, Joker and the, and the people, until like near the end of the And then you have to think about this. Obviously, I don't think about this metally, but like if this is, so... Okay, I think we're going to put this at the beginning of the podcast. The, just this section. Spoilers Before for every single movie. Yes. Okay. Spoilers. Well, for this podcast. Spoilers for every movie we're about to talk about. Continue with the podcast. It's apparently all it could be in his head at the end of it. And then people are saying, well, if it's all in his head, then what's the point of the movie? Wait, I'm sorry. Say that again? So remember at the end of the movie where he's in the white room and he goes, what are you laughing at? She goes, what are you laughing about? And he goes, eh, you, you wouldn't get, get it. it. Yeah. So people are saying, oh, it's it's not all real. And I go, and then people are like, okay, then. then now, this is the people that hate the movie for no, I, I don't hate the movie. I don't think the movie's a piece of shit. I think it's a good movie it's, still. I think it's a but great then you, movie. But then you're like, okay, if it's all in his head, then what was the point of the movie? Well, I mean, there was a theory regarding that where it was like, okay, if it did happen in his head, maybe he himself wasn't the Joker. But someone else in the yes. insane asylum heard about that and got inspired, and then he and became even the like Joker. At the end, we're like, which is a really cool scene. We're like, now obviously we, we're not rooting for the character. I didn't root for him. I'd be like, oh, oh. like I'm kind of like, he, he's obviously a bad guy. I'm not being like, woohoo, dude, kill everyone. Mm-hmm. But like, but you understand scene, where he's coming from. Yeah, but at the end of the movie, when he is like, puts when he has the frown and he finally smiles and he puts the blonde in his face like that, that's like okay. He's finally able to smile, and then you see the person in the alleyway go for Bruce Wayne's parents, and then literally, I I was with Kenny. Um, I, when I saw the movie with Kenny, I forget who else I saw it with. Um, but then I go, oh my god, are they gonna show Bruce Wayne's parents' death again? Like that's just been done so many times. I thought it was really cool how they did. Well, it no, 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 I thought it was opinion. cool because they didn't show it. Mm. Like they just implied it because if I were to watch it for like the twenty fifth incarnation of it, because Bro. Batman Begins did it the best mm-hmm. but if i were about to see it again i'd be like <laughs> bro oh god miguel what do you what do you like about um, each movie okay so about joker i liked how like like you like um you see how his uh, his mind works kind of and how like he mm-hmm. imagines everything like his relationship spoilers we whatever yeah and um uh you know like uh all all i just like the cinematics and stuff and i thought it was a really cool yeah the, like, the cinematography was really, really good I, for some I, I just thought it was a really cool um like like 
super villain movie, you know? Because yeah. we don't have we I mean, don't have a really lot like of those. A, it's more like a psychological than a super villain, well, villain but like right. yes, yeah. It's I like get, the start get, of one basically. Yeah. Um Spaceballs was really funny. <laughs> like really really funny, I will admit that. But so, at some points it was cringy as well. But well, I, it's I, the eighties, so yeah. I mean. So uh I still I still like uh, Spaceballs as well. So yeah, those are not not bad movies. Really good movies, both of them. Mm. Uh, Spaceballs and Joker's both have their moments mm -hmm. specifically. But like at the end when he laughs when he's with the lady yeah. in the white room, that was the first time he actually laughed. That wasn't his condition. Yeah. And then, you know when she says, "What's so funny?" Yeah, you wouldn't get you, it. You wouldn't get like it. he was in control of his laughter yeah. for the first time in that movie at that moment. And then whereas Spaceballs, you know. What was that scene at the end when they like they shoot like the Earth? Was it like a giant butthole or something? Or my what am I th what am I thinking of? The one scene where it looks like that giant ship they had no, to destroy. No, 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 so they go. <laughs> <laughs> I love this scene. So it's they fucking the the ship turns into basically a Statue of Liberty made. Oh yeah, that's right. And then she goes, sir. She's gone from suck to blow. <laughs> <laughs> and then fucking, it's literally the reverse footage of them like ripping up the plants and the trees and just putting it back. Into the sir, what's happening? It's Mega Maid, sir. She's gone from suck to, to blow. blow. <laughs> and then, and then like the fucking countdown when the ship is about to blow and he goes, fuck, even the future, nothing worth 10, 9, 8, 6. Six! What happened to seven? Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and then at the end he goes, three, two, one. Have a nice day. And they all go, thank you. <laughs> um, I will, every time I watch Spaceballs, I will laugh every mm, single time. Me too. Seeing Joker, I've only seen it two times. And every time, when I see it a third time, I think I'll enjoy it a lot more. I think, yeah, I've seen it two times as well. Yeah. But, I, um, I don't remember how many times I've seen it. So I'm not gonna. But um, if I were to have to choose a movie and say, Are okay, voting right now. Yes, I think okay. so. All right, so um, I'm going with Joker. <laughs> I as well. I'm also gonna go with Joker. I'm gonna go with Joker. Okay, well. so Joker will win, and then Joker will go up against whatever matchup. This will win Goodwill Hunting versus Get Out, but we won't go into that. So we'll do one more. We'll do another comedy versus another DC movie. Ferris Bueller's Day Off versus The Dark Knight. Okay, okay, so, um, so again, this takes into consideration of what we enjoy overall more. Ferris, when I first watched it, I remember, like, it was in 80s movies, and, like, Dad, or I, I was watching it on TV, and I was like, everyone's saying it's, so, it's good, and I was like, fuck it, I'll watch it. And I watch it, and I go, that was actually pretty good. Because it's, it's a comedy, but it's also, like, a it, for an 80s movies, 80s movie, it's a coming of age for, like, teenagers mm -hmm. it, he's going out he leaves for the entire day it was something um, that teenagers at the time could really relate yeah. to mm -hmm. because that was how they felt everything that ferris bueller did um i know i showed you both the movie and i remember i went over your house and like oh we're watching this movie bro i, I don't think I, I i you guys were like locked into it like laughing yeah. like, i think I, as much as i didn't i dreaded watching this movie I, it's actually one of my favorite movies and it, it wasn't because like we didn't. We heard bad things or anything about Ferris Bueller. It's, it's just like sometimes, like when we're hanging out we, and someone goes, "You want to watch a movie?" We're kind of like, "Oh, I kind of, okay, I kind of want to do something else." Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I felt the so same that. way. But, when but with we, my movies, but when, like when we watched Ferris Bueller, we were laughing our ass off. Right. That is a great movie, Once, and I think with Spaceballs, that's another one of the most quotable comedy movies. Um, mm -hmm. Like just the beginning, like I don't remember the exact quote. I used to say the exact quote. Do you know the exact quote at the beginning of the movie? He says like, like um, like I, I know day. the ending quote. Oh, what's the end? The, uh, what are you? You're still here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Credit scene. I was like, "You're still oh, here? here? The movie's over. So the movie's over. Go home. Go home." Oh, and then when I remember. I love it when Deadpool two did it. He goes, "Oh, you're waiting for like a Nick Fury like cameo, but <laughs> we don't have the budget for that." Um, <laughs> but no, that movie is like for that movie that spawned in a lot of like like what I just mentioned. Like mm -hmm. like people like in the future, people have like not redone the scenes, but like done slimmer mm -hmm. things. Like in Spider Man Homecoming, I what remember he's this? he's going through um what. I was saying references. Oh, yeah, uh, references. Like in Spider-Man: Homecoming, like he's going through the um, I don't remember this part. I think he was. You never saw the movie, but it's uh, where he goes to the party and he has to go back to Spider-Man because he sees people in the distance like shooting off guns and he has to chase the van. He goes through a yard, and the exact scene that Ferris Bueller does, and then in one scene you can see the movie Ferris Bueller playing, and then he running in like. Like par like parallel. I, think I remember that. So like many references, and it's just a very. Good, it's not even like a, it's a comedy movie. and There's no pot. The pot is pretty good. Like he, you know, he goes out with his best friend and his girlfriend, and you know they have like a funny ass time. Like I remember they steal the freaking car. Mm -hmm. Um, and then like um, there's the one scene where like 
he has to pretend to be like the dude's dad and then the principal is like <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> I haven't seen it in forever. I have to. I have I to see, rewatch I it. I, was last I think. Watch it when you showed us. I think I have I think to. I've seen it another time. I think that. I should rewatch it again. Um, if um, but um, it's a really good movie. Um, now, The Dark Knight. <laughs> Boy, what is there to say about The Dark Knight? I mean, it's my favorite superhero movie. I think it's arguably the best superhero movie. I mean, we can have this discussion, but it's. I, I feel like it is the best superhero movie. Um, I could go on for it for days and days. Um, but Nikki, I know you love the movie. I love the movie, but I'll get to that when it's my turn. Um, but finish. like, it's it, it's the way that it it was done. It's you. T- I was thinking about this, and there's people online that say if you take a Batman and just put a regular detective in, and it's not even Gotham City, it is a fantastic crime thriller still. Like, if you think about it, you take out Batman and just put a detective in, mm-hmm. it's still a great crime movie. Mm-hmm. Like, it's this is Batman not being the most detective, I think. So I think in the Arkham games, he's a lot more detective-y, which I like, yeah. more, which I like more. But even in this, like, Christopher Nolan is, like, on, like, another level where, like, he just, he was like, okay, gonna make this movie. The Dark Knight sequel to Batman Begins didn't intend to make a sequel, trying to make money for Inception. Let's do something here. And he comes out with this and I'm like, it makes a billion dollars and everyone's like, ah. Holy crap. I'm like, Ugh. And like Heath Ledger's acting is like, I, I, I told him this and I told, when I watched it with him a few days ago for the first time with Miguel and I said to him and I, I personally believe Heath Ledger is better Joker because I think Joaquin Phoenix is a, does definitely deserved his Oscar, is definitely a good Joker. I think Heath Ledger's is scarier. Mm-hmm. Like, Hands like, down. Like, Hands. if I were to be in a room, if I had to choose the doorway between Joaquin Phoenix's Joker and Heath Ledger's Joker, I'd rather choose Joaquin Phoenix's because I do not want to be sitting in the room with Heath Ledger. Right. Because then he'll be like, okay, so I have a bus full of 10 people Literally. inside this water bottle. Like, like before you even no, enter no, no. the room, he already has, like, your family held captive. Uh, right now, your butler is going to his house, and right now, on his doorstep, there is a note that says, up. He will be looking up. There is a nest full of birds. And he just keeps going on and <laughs> Literally. on. Literally. Literally. Um, it, uh, it's such a great movie. Like, the acting is great. Mm-hmm. It's, I mean, the movie was nominated for Best Picture, but obviously I, it w- probably wouldn't have won because obviously there's a superhero movie and there's probably like, I don't know what movie won, but mm. um, Heath Ledger is definitely w- deserving of that Oscar. Um, everyone's great. It's shot beautifully. That's why, that's why there's like fucking four Christopher Nolan movies in there because I just love the way I don't know if you saw this, but like when he does IMAX and the screen gets bigger, it just it's so much better. Yeah, he knows how to use it's, an aspect ratio. Oh my god, it's really like well. it's I don't want to get sexual, but it's like, oh my god, like Jesus. Like it's like it's like that's how movies <laughs> <laughs> What kind of kink do you got? Okay. No, but like okay, my last thing, but like just the way he shoots that movie is just great. Yes, definitely. All right. Hands down. Okay. So I'll start with Ferris Bueller. Okay. One of the most iconic comedies, not just of the 80s, but of all time. Because like you said, it it really um, gave the teenagers at that time something to relate to. Excuse yeah. me, relate to. It's something that Especially, they can relate oh, to. Oh, definitely, yeah. And whenever, especially when it comes to younger individuals, when it comes to a movie or a piece of media that someone can relate to, it tends to become more iconic. Because when they get older, they can say, hey, that, bring, that reminds me of my youth. You know, stuff like that. And Ferris Bueller, I think, is the perfect representation of that. Because it shows a kid... Who skips school? Who has a principal that like basically goes after him? Goes to and, his like, house. Goes to his house, <laughs> and you know he spends a day with his girlfriend and his best friend, and they kind of you know become closer. It's 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 like an experience basically, yeah. and a lot of teenagers, granted maybe didn't steal cars and you know pretended to be their father like he did <laughs> like that, but it's definitely something that they can relate to because it gives someone they're like wow that's how I feel. Ferris Bueller was like the representation of like the teenager back in the eighties and like mm-hmm. how everyone felt regarding going to school and just wanting to go out and be free. Mm-hmm. And like I said earlier, just like Spaceballs, it has a lot of memorable quotes, a lot of iconic scenes that have been done many other times in other pieces of media. Like Family Guy, for example, did a, a oh, yeah. reference to uh, when Ferris Bueller's trying to run home and beat his uh, his oh, dad's yeah, car. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's like a really iconic scene that's been done a few times as well. Yeah. And then Deadpool with regarding the whole, you're still here. <laughs> oh, you're so, expecting Nick Fury, huh? <laughs> yeah, you're expecting Nick Fury. So it's stuff like that. So when you know, you know when a movie has other pieces of media make references to it. You know, it's not only a good movie, but it's an iconic movie. So I definitely will say it's a great, great comedy movie. But let me tell you something. The Dark Knight, in my opinion, that doesn't matter, this is my opinion, 
the greatest your opinion is shit. The okay. greatest superhero movie of all time. I think that's a pretty good opinion yes, coming yeah, from I someone do, who I can do say like, shit. Yes, I do like your opinion. In my opinion, I think is the greatest valid. superhero mu movie of all time. With, in my opinion, the greatest villain and portrayal of that villain of all time. I will say 100% beyond a reasonable doubt that Heath Ledger's Joker is the best. Now, this is up for debate between Mark Hamill, even Jack Nicholson. They, they play not, different who's versions. Jared yeah, exactly. <laughs> Damn. Goes, I'm sorry, Jared Leto. Jared Leto. I'm sorry, bro. That was, yeah. I, I don't know what that was. But that the was thing is, like, that's listens, why you like, can't, Brides. that's why you can't compare them because, like, they play different jokes. Exactly. It's like they're, it's like they're different villains but, like, who just so happen to have, like, the same costume and name Heath on. Ledger's, Heath Ledger. Heath Ledger is just scarier. So, what makes is that Heath Ledger is genuinely intimidating. There are, like, very few people in I think cinema that have actually made me feel very intimidated. One of those is Terrence Fletcher from Whiplash. Mm -hmm. He is a scary motherfucker. One, um, two, you have three, four, the uh, I forget his name, but the drill sergeant from Full Metal Jacket. Yep. He's mm -hmm. a scary That's dude. Just a meme at this point. And Heath Ledger, it's it's not so because that he screams and yells all the time or stuff like that. It's just kind of like Terrence Fletcher. He's extremely unpredictable. Where mm -hmm. one thing, where one mm -hmm. minute. You know, he's just kind of sitting there. Next thing you know, he's explaining to you how, like, freaking, again, spoiler, Rachel and Harvey Dent are trapped down and they're about to blow up and he needs to go save them. And I think because of Heath Ledger's Joker, the movie The Dark Knight is more so about Joker than it is Batman because... Like Than, like mm -hmm. Avengers Infinity War with Thanos. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Because, like, the whole movie, you know, like you said, it doesn't do so much of Batman's detective work. It's more so kind of like... It's it's more of a reactive than a proactive movie play, because like they kind of react to whatever Heath Ledger's Joker does in the movie and trying to figure out from there. But he's always one step ahead of they, them. And they, he's always doing yeah. something. They play a lot with the character. Like obviously you don't go, you don't see Joker go to the house and apply his makeup on it. Exactly. Like but every time he's on the, you know, the, the screen. I was about to say the telly. The telly. <laughs> <laughs> the telly. Every time he's on the telly, um, he just you just. You, you know more and more about him, and it's like the way that's done mm. is just great. The way they do that, too, that's another thing, too. So there was a video I watched. It compared Heath Ledger's Joker to Jared Leto's Joker. Why? No, 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 no. <laughs> but no, here's the thing. And they wanted to explain, like, when you introduce a character, oh, here's oh, how you do oh, it. Oh, yeah. In Suicide Squad, when they introduce, like, a character, they kind of just say, name, blah, 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 what he does, exactly. blah, blah, blah. Exactly. They kind of just state it. Mm -hmm. Whereas Heath Ledger's Joker, the first time you get to see what his character is like is when he goes into the, the room with all the mob bosses. And that's how you get a feel of what he's like. Uh, okay, uh, he doesn't take uh, himself seriously. Uh, Life means nothing to him. He'll kill someone like that without even thinking about it. And that's, like, a really good way of introducing a character. And with that, um, I think... It probably holds my favorite cinema scene of all time, which is the interrogation oh scene. I think that's one of the best moments in acting history ever. Mm -hmm. Like the laugh, the way he just, you know, plays with Batman. It's just so haunting and it's so phenomenally done. I know I'm sucking off this movie's dick, but I think it has <laughs> I think I think it I think it has I think Bro, it I think you might suck, suck off Christopher Nolan more literally, than me right now. I'm just saying because I love this movie so I much know. and it's just like when I watched the Joker I was like, okay, I need to watch The Dark Knight again because I need to compare. I told, I told you to watch it. I, 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 I needed to compare Jokers. Recently. And I was like, Joaquin Phoenix is good. I'm sorry. Heath Ledger is the best. I still need to watch the 1989 Batman to see how Jack Nicholson's is. Oh, yeah. It, 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 I heard it's, it's, really it's, it's very good. It's still good. Like, it, you, you got to, like I said before, different time periods, different Jokers, but mm -hmm. they're all great. Yeah, um, so da Dark Knight, probably also probably one of the most quotable movies as well. These are all very quotable yeah, and iconic mm -hmm. movies, so... My opinion, the best superhero movie has the best villain, the best portrayal of that villain, and just overall very well made movie. So that's just my take on both those movies, Miguel. But Miguel. So, um, I recently saw The Dark Knight for the first time. Yes, yes, yes. Really? A few days ago. A few oh, days but ago. I showed him. I showed him. Yeah. Um, I I will say that Joker is definitely more scary and more <laughs> diabolical than jo uh, Joaquin Phoenix. Because, like, Joaquin Phoenix is, like, Joker is, like, his coming up story, his origin story or whatever. Mm -hmm. And he's not as, like, like like dangerous. He's not as like, smart. Well, he, well yeah. He like, hasn't gotten to Heath Ledger's Joker's it, part yet. So, so Joaquin Phoenix's Joker is, like, like he's getting there, but he doesn't have his plans, like, in his mind yet. He just does stuff, like, like yeah. out of nowhere. But I just do. I just do. <laughs> Heath Ledger's Joker, he plans, like, methodically, evilly and stuff like that. So, I will give it that. I feel like... For a Batman movie, it could have been a little bit more interesting. Real, really? Yeah, because, like, um, I don't know. I just, like, feel like, like, his Batcave was, like, uh, well, well, well yeah, you, that, that is his Batman mission. begins. Yeah, he, okay, he so get fair enough. Blown up. But, um, <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's still a good movie. Uh, I liked it. It wasn't too bad. Um, Ferris Bueller Days Off, like I said, I, I was dreading watching that movie. And then yes. I, I, it's definitely up there for one of my favorites, you know? Like, like, just, like, the little, like, 
like um what's the word i'm looking for like subtle like comedy and stuff mm-hmm. in there and yeah it, it's just super funny and um i just like the the cinematography as well from uh Ferris okay Bueller. yeah that it was like, pretty good the, the colors and, and uh, chicago as well mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so definitely yeah that's all i have to say for both all right well, short and sweet yeah and so um i think I'm, it's pretty obvious what... i'm going to the dark night i'm sorry I i'm gonna ferris be bueller. also going to the dark night. i'm going ferris bueller okay well okay mm-hmm. I, mean, I, I mean th- these are all good movies these like, are all great movies we're i not... personally enjoyed ferris bueller more that's this, fair this is probably the first loss of a movie like like because mm-hmm. this is the first time we all uh, voted not all of us voted different movies but like you know he voted a different movie and we voted the same movie it does not mm-hmm. matter we all think these movies are fantastic mm-hmm. it just we come from a bias because we just feel that the dark knight <laughs> is the best superhero movie right. so, so there's no way we're gonna we weren't gonna pick that over ferris bueller so that one dark dark knight will go up against the winner of parasite versus whiplash and um I, that, that was we only did two matchups but i think that's good enough for today definitely yeah. definitely <laughs> thank you everyone for watching another episode of Life on Easy Mode podcast. A lot of interesting things to talk about today, and this is pretty fun. Uh, it is. I, 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 honestly, I didn't realize, I thought we thought you guys weren't going to be as in-depth as I was with the movies. I was like, this well, is we're good. Not, we're not nearly as much as movie people mm-hmm. as you are, but, you know. But I, still, like, I, 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 I was very, this was very good. This it was. going very well. Definitely. We probably shouldn't plan. ramble on as long as we did. Well, I mean, but it's, 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 it was good. it's good to do that, though, because mm. you, you get a better feeling of how each of us like the movies. So. Right. So, but um, this is a uh, Zion Jeruso. This is Nikki. I'm Miguel. And Miguel, do you have any final closing words? Uh, stonks. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>